Hello, I'm Craig McLean and welcome to episode 4 of the Mini Twin Cam 16 Valve Improvements. As you can see, in this episode, we'll be getting the engine back in the car. We're already there, obviously. But yeah, we'll get the engine lifted in, we'll get it all buttoned up. I'll show you uh, connecting up the various items underneath, under the bonnet, etc. And getting the car close to being uh, ready for the road again. And to hit the shore seasons of 2023. So let's crack on with a lot of the jobs we need to do to get the car back up and running. So the first job in this episode is to fit this. This is 10 mil internal diameter. And as you can see there, it's marked up as fuel and oil or even coolant. It's fairly thick walled. It's not quite as pliable as the old stuff I had on, but it's a lot thicker. It's a lot more heavy duty. I think that'll be really good stuff. So I'm going to give that a go. I'm going to fit that as neatly as possible. I'll let you see it when they're on. And then, uh, and then that's another step closer to getting the engine back in, in this episode. Right, just a little bit of a view with the uh, air intake pipe off so I can show you better. The left hand side too, go up and round and I returned from the head and the one on the right hand side goes up the back onto this rail here which is like a common common rail for uh, for the breathers. One goes round to the side of the head, goes in behind the cam belt there, I designed it to go in behind. That one goes up to the collector tank, uh, I've, I've put a collector tank in just in case there's never anything in it. Um, and then the other one goes over to the breather on the other side which is that down there with a bit of blue bit of blue ragging they're just all linked together and have one common uh, breather point seems to work well it's never been an issue so i'll carry on with it and it's a nice neat way of doing it so yeah it is a bit cluttered there's a lot going on in this area there's a lot going on in all areas because it's a mini there's a lot being crammed under the bonnet to this very small mini now long-term viewers of the channel will often know i have denzel the little blue male shetland sheepdog in the gauge with me well, we've got another one. Ruby. This is Ruby. We've got two now for our sins. She's sulking today because uh, Denzel's went for a walk up a fell with the wife. And she's here with me, so she's doing a lot of crying. But, yeah, they're an absolute nightmare, the two of them together. But we wouldn't swap them for the world. Anyways, that's another job out the way. Now I'm going to get on with doing a full nut and bolt check. And I've got that. Uh, air intake breather to put back on and a little bit to file off the bottom so it doesn't foul the pipes but that's that should be straightforward we'll get on with that now this is the air intake and i'm just going to basically like that knobble at the bottom i'm going to take it off and chamfer that at an angle to make them pipes flow nicer i'm going to do that in the bench grinder and i'll uh, i'll let you see it when it's done and there we go just a simple chamfer just to give the pipe a bit more room to flow and there we go with the air intake fitted back on and i'm really pleased with that because them pipes take a really nice smooth curve now there's no sharp edges or anything for them to rub against there it's a lot better than i expected it would be really pleased with that that's a big improvement on how it was before i've had to shave a little bit more off the elbow to give a little bit better clearance but it still seals up nicely because the, the part i was shaving off it's got nothing to do with the ceiling face thankfully so yeah that's uh that's another good success right we're done the engine is now ready to go back in i've put the clamp that i made it's like a padded clamp that's why i've left this bracket on it's just good for mounting things on i was going to chop it off but i thought no for, for a start it mounts this little padded clamp i made which just holds the top radiator hose out the way because when everything's in the engine bay it tries to force its way towards the cam belt so i made that little clamp just to make sure it never ever would rub so yeah we're all back together now everything's tight i've went i've went along every single bolt i've got the tiniest tiniest little nip on one or two but other than that i generally do tighten things up as i go along i never leave things loose because that's how you end up forgetting about things and then things end up uh, coming loose when you don't want them to so yeah we're done we're absolutely done so this friday coming hopefully i'll be able to pull the escort back outside 
if it's a decent day. Bring the crane in, lift this back in, get it at least bolted in, drive shafts in, and then I can just potter away at my leisure, getting this all buttoned back up. But yeah, we've definitely made some real, real worthwhile um, improvements while this has been out. And hopefully the main one being the cam timing, which will mean hopefully we'll get near the 200 brake horsepower mark that we want. Um, if not, we'll just have to investigate further, obviously. Right, the day has came to put this engine back where it belongs. So I've got it all set up. I've got the crane back out. I've got the uh, ropes all tied up. I've done a tri lift. It's lifting up quite uh, really nice, nice and square. So I'm waiting on my mate coming because there's no point me struggling on my own. It makes life so much easier when there's two of you. So as soon as Auntie turns up, I'll put you on time lapse. We'll get this engine lowered in and uh, <clears throat> I'll either make a start today, bolting it back in, or I'll be out here one day this weekend and then I can get all sorts connected back up. There's uh, loads of little jobs that are re really easy hitters to start getting connected back up. Stuff like your clutch, your exhaust, your uh, gear selector, it can all be done in pretty quick uh, quick time. So anyways, let's get this engine back in and it's off my garage floor. Give me a little bit more space because at the minute, it's scratching hell out my floor moving it about. Well guys, that's the engine back in. Me and Anthony bolted it down yesterday onto the subframe, which is always a job. That's nice to get out the way, because getting at the nuts on the inside, certainly underneath this side are a bit of a pain. Certainly a lot easier when there's two of you want to hold the bolt in so it doesn't just drop out when you try and put the nut on. But yeah, we're back in and I'm relieved to get it back in because I hate lifting engines in and out. All it takes is something to go wrong and you'll destroy either the engine or the car or even both. So yeah, it's uh, it's certainly nice to get that back in. I'm going to crack on today with getting the uh, the engine bolted back in, various components reconnected. I think I'm going to start underneath. So I'm going to jack the car up, put it on the ramps, and uh, and start with the likes of the exhaust. Start with the likes of the gear selector. The bottom engine steadies I'll put on loose because it's nice to be able to rock the engine backwards and forwards as you're fitting parts. Um, yeah, just get some of the, the awkward bits underneath done, I think, to start with. And then I'll maybe move on to the clutch and other little bits and bobs. But yeah, we're, uh, we're starting to look more like we were again. Because when you're taking the engine out, you just feel like you're going backwards. And, and, and it's hard to get motivated when you're going backwards. Um, but when, you, when you're putting it back in, you're going in the right direction, you're heading towards completion, so it's a lot, lot more motivating. I, I feel so much more full of motivation today than when I was taking it out, because taking it out, I just felt like, ah, I'm going backwards, this is, you know, but you've got to go backwards to go forwards, unfortunately. So yeah, let's crack on and uh, get the engine back in the car properly. Right, it's really difficult to video because I can't really get the camera far enough away. But here we are underneath the car. We've got the gear selector with its bias spring reconnected, the pin put back through. We've got the uh, the exhaust system and its bracket reconnected. I've double nutted it to stop that coming loose. Drive shafts need a touch up, they've got a bit scratched. That's one of a little job to do. But yeah, that's uh, oh, the engine steady back on as well. The engine stays back on just loose for now. 
so I've got a bit of engine movement but yeah as you can see all the real work underneath is pretty much done so I can now drop the car down and concentrate on stuff under the bonnet well just a couple of hours later and I've got quite a few things connected starter motor electrics one of the oil cooler lines uh, the sensors for oil pressure and temperature they're all back connected again i've left that one off because it, 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 it's easier to leave that line off until you get your uh, intercooler and planning chamber back in routed some of the cables back refitted the um, brake master cylinder in place and the oil filler remounted the oil pickup and its pipe work bolted the exhaust on with some new um, copper nuts uh, what else? Oh, I've done some of the uh, coolant hoses, the speedo cable. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I've got done today. Obviously, you've already seen I've done the underside as well. So yeah, it's it is coming together fast now. Um, another day or so, I should see it pretty much back together. But I do have to replace the fuel hoses for new. I'm replacing all the fuel hoses under the bonnet because they've been on a good few years. And I'm going to redesign the boost hose that comes from here. It did come up round through here and down into the intercooler. Uh, I'm going to redesign that because that's one area of the car I've never been happy with as well. Um, I also need to make a bracket to hold that pipe there away from the fan. It never did hit, but I was always concerned about it potentially coming into contact. So I'll make a bracket for that. Uh, yeah, a couple more things, things still to fit, but... It's a decent day. The dog's been great all day. She's been no bother. So I think I'll stop, take her for a walk and uh, reconvene another day. Right guys, bit of a midway point in the day. I've been on it about three hours today so far. We've got the radiator in. That is a bit of a swine to drop down into that gap. It's all buttoned up, hose is on. All bolted down. There is the thermostat housing I talked about in an earlier video. That is a really beautiful bit of kit that. It looks absolutely amazing, all CNC machined. So we've got all that top hose connected, I've got the bottom hose connected. We've got the alternator back in place and the belt tensioned. We've got the intercooler fitted back in place. The, um, oil, one of the, the second oil cooler hose is now attached. Uh, all the top wiring is clipped back in place, all the injectors connected back up, throttle position sensor connected back up. And now I'm going to look at dropping in the plenum chamber, buttoning all that up. I'll probably replace some of the fuel hoses because I've got a bit of an issue. This is one of the hoses here. Now it was designed to run underneath and through. You can just see a little tube down there underneath the orange one. And that's where the, that little tube welded in place on that bracket was designed to guide the pipe away from the fan blade. The problem is the new fuel gear, fuel pipe is a thicker gauge and it won't slide through that tube. So I'm going to have to try and find another one for that one. But yeah, that's some really good progress this morning, but I'm not finished yet. I'll give you a short update, very, uh, well it'll be two seconds time, um, when I get some more parts bolted back into place. Before I fit it, just a bit of a close-up on the plenum chamber because how bloody beautifully made is that? This is the level of quality of parts that you get from specialist components. I'll try and spin it over and show you the other side. Just absolutely phenomenal. Really is. And the only alteration I've made to it is this was just a pipe outlet because it's normally a natural as aspirated uh, set up or they use them sometimes for the supercharged engines but I've added on this elbow which comes round underneath and goes right onto the elbow on the intercooler all that's hidden and it's nice and neat so yeah that was just something I did a, a couple of years ago now to uh, to make it work in this setup but yeah I just thought I'd show you that because is it me or is that just absolutely outstanding engineering well we're really getting there now this is the end of the same day We've now got the grill on, which obviously means everything at the front is done. So we've now got the plenum chamber on, bolted in, connected up. I've replaced all the fuel lines from the fuel rail up to the fuel filter and from the pressure regulator to the return. 
the other line, etc. All for brand new unleaded resistant hose because them ones have been on a fair few years. I'm also going to do the same in the boot because the ones in the boot have been on 15 years and I bet they're in a right state. So that'll be getting, that's one of my next jobs to do. So it's almost done. You'll notice that this boost hose is still missing. That's because I'm redesigning that, as I've said uh, in the past. Uh, and I've also got a couple of odds and sods here and there. The engine still needs to reconnect. I need a new pipe for the map sensor up to the vacuum. Uh, there's an earth there to put on uh, the the vacuum pipe for the brake servo still to put on and reroute nicely but other than that it's pretty much it's pretty much done to be fair it's come a long way today i'm really getting there now so yeah not a lot to do but uh i'll crack on with some of these other little jobs get some fluids back in it and then hopefully we can uh, get it fired up and get a tune out of it right other than the boost hose obviously to route through here much neater than it was from the turbo output there other than that we're fully back together everything's now reconnected we've got our new vacuum pipe for the map sensor everything's sorted out clipped in nice and neat um yeah it's pretty much it's pretty much done i'm really happy with pretty much everything now there's nothing under there that i'm a uh, that I'm unhappy about anymore, which was the whole aim of this engine out. Um, you know, the whole aim of taking the engine out in the first place was to get around these areas that I was unhappy with. So yeah, it's been a success. So yeah, I've still got the fluids to put in and the boost doors to do. But other than that, it's finished. And I'll probably cover the boost doors redesign on the next video. Well guys, that's it. We're done. Other than the boost doors, which like I say, I'll cover in the next uh, episode, I've got an idea for the boost doors uh, to utilise a pipe that I've, that I've already got. Um, so it, hopefully that'll just be a case of uh, cutting it, modifying it, re-welding it, making it nice and probably getting powder coated, um, add some brackets to it to make it uh, suit this application. Other than that, I've got the rear bumper to replace. The rear bumper has had a, a dent in it for quite a few years where I accidentally reversed into my toolbox many years ago and I never bothered to replace it at the time. I just knocked the dent out as best as I could. It needs a new set of number plates because the front one has got badly damaged while I've been working on it. And to be fair, it already had chips in it and stuff, so that doesn't matter. So I've got a new set of plates to fit. And other than that, it's basically a, a good clean, a good clean ready for the short season. And later in the year, I'm looking to get some paint work done, uh, just due to stone chips, the bonnet, the front panel and the arches. Other than that, the car is still absolutely mint. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you very, very shortly on the remaining couple of jobs that's still left to do. See you next time.